I've been around Mopars my whole life. It's a passion for me. It was a passion for my dad. He, you know, he raced the cars, he collected the cars, and we've had a lot of enjoyment with them throughout the years. My business has grown from my passion uh, for the hobby. I have one of the biggest uh, inventories of Mopar muscle car era parts, and uh, that's where a lot of people know me from. It's Tony from Tony's Mopar Parts. Folks also may recognize me for my appearances on the hit TV show, Graveyard Cars. Throughout the years, I've also been able to collect a bunch of cool cars. While my business is buying and selling parts, I'm not in the business of buying and selling cars. So now for the first time, I'm gonna make five of my cars available for somebody else to own and enjoy. I always wanted a wing car. I was a fan of uh, Mopar, of course, and I liked NASCAR and Richard Petty, and I always felt the wing cars were the most radical cars ever built. I had a deposit on one when I was 15 years old, but my mom felt it was too much of a car, you know, too much of a race car for a 15-year-old kid to have, which I understand now. So throughout the years, I always uh, wanted one, and I heard about this car in 1999. I inquired, I spoke to the owner. He said the car was in good shape, and, and I asked a local friend of mine in Connecticut where the car was located. I says, hey, do you hear anything about this car? And he says, yeah, I heard it had some uh, areas of worn paint. So I said, well, the owner doesn't say that. Can you look into it and get back to me? So he did, and he says, well, the areas that were worn paint were the wing, the, the fender scoops, and the nose which is fine on a Survivor because those parts of the car were put on after the car was, the body, the main body was already painted and uh, baked on enamel, where these other parts were hand-painted lacquer. So it's typical that they're gonna show wear and not as good coverage to the paint as the, uh, as the rest of the car. So at that point, I went and looked at the car and uh, it was what it was supposed to be. It, pretty much everything except for the exhaust and the batteries original to the car. My Superbird was sold new at First Avenue Chrysler Plymouth in Des Moines, Iowa. They were a big performance dealership, akin to the Mr. Norms, but for Plymouths. There's an iconic photo showing their lot taking delivery of brand new AAR Cudis. A lot of dealerships couldn't sell the Superbirds. After selling the 500 uh, Daytonas the year before, and now they had to make over 1,900 Superbirds to get them to be uh, legalized for NASCAR, um, a lot of dealers you know, couldn't sell them, but this dealership because it was a performance dealership, would actually get the Superbirds from those other dealers that couldn't sell them. And they sold, I believe, 16 Superbirds just from this dealership alone. And this was one of them. I have a full ownership history from the first owner up to me. And uh, matter of fact, another thing cool about this car, when I bought the car, I got a, a build sheet with the car. And then I contacted one of the former owners, or actually he contacted me. He had a build sheet for the car. And then the original owner, Eldon, he, uh, he found two more build sheets that he had, plus the original window sticker and bill of sale. So uh, this car has so much documentation to it. I mean, it's great that a car has one build sheet. This car actually has four. Getting in a Superbird, is, when you're inside the car, it's not that much different than a Roadrunner, except for you have to be conscious of the extra two foot long nose on the front uh, when parking it, especially. Uh, but when you're in the car, you get a lot of weird looks from people because a lot of people aren't familiar with that or hadn't seen anything like that before. But this car in particular, because it's a survivor and it's never been a part, is such a nice, tight driving car. When the spark plug wires were installed on the engine, the engine paint was still wet. And you can notice on the original set of spark plug wires, there's some orange paint where they were pressed into the wire loom holders where the orange paint got on them and only really a survivor will, uh, will show that. With all the paperwork, including all the build sheets, the, the, wind, uh, the window sticker, the bill of sale, the, the NASCAR letter that came with the car, and the condition of it, this car would be impossible to replace. While all the cars I own are rare and different and special for some reason or another, I realize that it's become time to let them go. And that'll be happening this January at Mecham's Kissimmee Auction.